And Heavenly Father, give us your Holy Spirit as we hear your word today. Help us to always remember that you love us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's really going to be our focus for today is the word love. We lit the second Advent candle. And if you want a good place to go in the Bible that talks about love, you can't go wrong with 1 John, the book in the New Testament, where it says in the fourth chapter of 1 John, God is love. And it goes on a little further to say, we love because he first loved us. You see how it works? He does the loving first. He first loved us so that we can love others. He first served us so that we can serve others. He first has forgiven us so that we can forgive others. You see where it begins and where it ends? It starts with God. Worship, the heartbeat and flow of worship is from God to us. He's coming to us. He's filling us with his divine presence. He's loving us. He's forgiving us. He's doing time with us in a good way. And then it's us then responding back to God with prayer and with thanksgiving and with joy. God comes to us and then we respond back with love. A lot of people think that, well, you know, if I just love the Lord, our God, with all our heart, soul, and mind, and if I love my neighbor as myself, then I'm in. See how that works? So let me ask you a question, trick question, you guys. Okay, pretend we're in a school. Does loving God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and loving our neighbor as ourself make us right with God? The answer is? Why? Because we're still a sinner. We can't do love perfectly, can we? I mean, my love breaks down. I don't know about yours, but my love kind of comes and sometimes it goes. Sometimes I feel in love and sometimes I'm out of love. Love, this side of heaven here on earth because of sin, is conditional. I'll love you if you do this or that for me. Ever been there before? Ever thought that before? Ever done that before? We love if someone loves us. We're kind if someone is kind to us. We forgive if someone forgives us. Thank goodness that God doesn't operate that way with us. Well, you know, I'm just getting so tired of your sins and you're not getting it right because you don't love me with all your heart, soul, and mind. You put your love and your trust in other things and you're not really loving your neighbors as yourself. In fact, you're not really loving your family members as yourself either. So I'm going to divorce you. I want nothing to do with you because of your sin. You're just stinking it up. Thank goodness God doesn't do that for us. He loves us. He cares for us. And he's demonstrated it most clearly to us through the cross of his son, Jesus Christ. And what did Jesus do on the cross for us? He died for our sins. And then he rose again from the dead. He's not a dead God. He's an alive God. And we love because he first loved us. So if I love my family members, if I love my friends, if I love my church members, and I do, <laughs> and if I love MVCS, and I do, it's because God first loved me. Amen? Amen. God first and then us. Another Bible passage you can't go wrong with or chapter in the New Testament is 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You know, if you get 10 people in a room and you said, hey, what is your definition of love? You're probably going to get nine or 10 different definitions, right? Here's what love is to me. Well, here's what love is to me. And here's what love is to me. But there in 1 Corinthians, it says, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It keeps no record of wrongs. And we think, man, this is something that we have to do to somehow make ourselves right with God. But then we look in the mirror and say, man, I really fall short of that. But I like how the author, the Apostle Paul, begins that chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. And now I will show you the most excellent way. Who is the most excellent way? Jesus. His love is patient. 
His love is a kind. It does not have any. It does not boast. It does not read. It's rude. It's not self-seeking. It keeps no record of wrongs. Thank goodness, because I like to keep a record of wrongs. How about you? God doesn't keep a record of our wrongs because we walk in faith. We believe His Son, Jesus, died for our sins and rose again. And I want to share with you one last Bible verse, and we're done. It's from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. This is one that you can hang on to. I've shared it with FGS people. I share it a lot with people. I've been doing it for a long time because I want you to remember the heart of this message. Let's, there we go. Be, let's say it together. Ephesians 4.32. Are you ready? Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Now here's an easy acronym to remember this. KFC. Anybody hungry? <laughs> you are, Stephen? Okay. Kindness, forgiveness, and compassion. Now, we all know what being kind is, right, guys? It's just being nice to people. It's being friendly. It's just smiling. Hey, how's your day going? How are you? You know, I've been thinking about you, and I hope things are going okay. What's the opposite of being kind, guys? Rude, mean, stubborn, not caring about other people, angry, upset. Man, it's so much nicer and easier in life. It'll go so much better for you if we're just kind. In fact, my father used to say it often in his older adult years. He's deceased now. Deceased now. He said, hey, Brad, just remember to be kind. I'm like, man, I need to remember that. Just have a little more kindness today. Wouldn't that go a long way for us? in our churches, in our schools, in our businesses, and in our communities. How about forgiving? I don't know about you guys, but this is a tough one for me. It's forgiving people for stuff that they've done to me. And how about them forgiving us? All right. I've heard one, somebody once say, you know, unforgiveness, that means not forgiving, unforgiveness is the poison we drink thinking it'll kill somebody else. You ever heard of that put that way before? This stuff will kill you. In fact, health experts and doctors say the best thing that you can do for yourself health-wise is to forgive other people. That means let go of it. Now, sometimes people have hurt us and they've wounded us and we start thinking about them, you know, stuff in the past and we start getting angry and upset again. We, hey, no, don't go there, Brad. You've forgiven them. You need to let go of that and you need to get off that. You need to forgive as you have been forgiven. I think we prayed it in the Lord's Prayer this morning, didn't we? What did we pray? about our trespasses you know forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and then finally compassion kindness forgiveness compassion that just basically means to care compassion means you really feel for somebody and what they're going through but it goes a step further you actually do something to try to help them out to alleviate their pain you know i don't think hate is really the opposite of love i think it's indifference it's just not caring. Thank goodness that God does all these three things perfectly for us in Jesus Christ. He's kind to us. We don't deserve his kindness because we're broken, messed up, and sinful. We don't deserve his forgiveness, and yet he lavishes his forgiveness and mercy and grace upon us every day. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. I don't deserve to be forgiven, but I am because I have faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? And so are you because you have faith in Jesus Christ. And God, he really should just kind of do this with me. I, I'm going to stop caring about you because you just get it wrong way too much of the time. I mean, look at your life resume. And yet he just still keeps caring for me and walking with me every day and helping me through the highs and the lows and the ups and downs and the hills and the valleys. Where does my help come from? We said in Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, can you think of somebody right now as we close that comes to your mind who's along with God, of course, who's kind and forgiving and compassionate or caring? Can you think of somebody right now? So can I, and I'd like to show her a picture of her to you. That's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> the one on the right. <laughs> 86 years old. I just saw her in San Antonio. And... Um, She's slowing down a little bit, 
Um, and that's Belinda on the left-hand side. She's from Senior Blessings, a Christian ministry that goes into people's homes and, and just helps them out. It's not in-home health, it's in-home help, and we all need help sometimes. And we have help from God who is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble, Psalm 46, verse one, and sometimes we need help from other people as well. Now, don't let her Mercedes-Benz cat fool you. She drives a 24-year-old Buick Park Avenue that's paid off and needs a paint job. <laughs> but man, uh, you know, over the years, and believe me, especially when I was younger, did I mess up. When I was messing up, she was just kind to me most of the time. You know, she knew how to discipline too. She was forgiving when I didn't deserve to be forgiven, my twin brother or my older brother, because we made her life miserable sometimes. And she just kept on caring for me and encouraging me and giving me those back scratches every night before I went to bed and just kept on loving me. She did for me what God does for each and every one of us in and through his son, Jesus Christ. KFC, kindness, forgiveness, and compassion. God has it for you. Share it with others. In Jesus' name, amen.